Hey everyone, it's just me in the studio right now. Angus has left me to record this alone. Luckily, he has left me with some pre-recorded things that I can make him say literally anything. Well, not really. Any of the five things he's told me. Yeah! We have entered a podcast competition to win a heap of prizes, and there is a People's Choice category, and we need you guys to vote. That's right! We have submitted two minutes of original content, so content you will not hear on this podcast unless you vote for us. That's right. Um, it's amazing, isn't it, Angus? Wowza! We need you guys to vote. We need your vote to help us. I totally agree. You can vote by going in the description of this episode. It is the first thing. It is. It says, vote for Zach and Gus. Just click that. Use your Facebook account. Use your Gmail account. Use any account you've got. That's right. We really need you guys to vote. So, Angus. Go vote now. This is Zach and Gus, the podcast. Rock, paper, scissors, rock. <laughs> oh, for the first time, Angus has beeped I, up. I did the thing where you, where you say the, the thing and you do the thing. So we're going to go again, I think. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors, rock. scissors. Hey, and welcome everyone to the Zach and Gus podcast, episode 11. We've made it to my favourite. Did we celebrate last week being episode 10? We didn't really. We kind of just acknowledged it should have been a barbecue episode. Because most podcasts I listen to, every time they reach any sort of milestone, they're like, holy shit. But yeah, we, like we... people cele- usually celebrate the 5, the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 50. We ignored the 5 and the 10. I mean, I think we would have just assumed we never would have made it to any of them, so we don't really notice as it goes past. Yeah, and we also record them a full week in advance, so it's not really hitting us. Yeah. Um, quick thing, the, anyone who's new to the podcast, they're going to be completely confused, and I've realised that we, apart from the first time we did it, never addressed why we rock off at the start of each podcast. Well, I mean, I don't think you need to address how you start your podcast. I feel like it needs a uh, disclaimer. Like, every episode? No, just for this one. Maybe every so often. But we didn't know how to start a podcast. and Yeah, it's always really awkward trying to lead into uh, just, like, an introduction. So so. we decided we would play rock, paper, scissors. And, you know, it it worked while we couldn't see each other. And now that we can see each other, we're really horrible at it. You would think it would be easier, but we're just really shit. Yeah, um, and we also have a leaderboard that is always referenced. And some people might not understand where it comes from. The leaderboard has a tally of all the games we've ever played across radio and our podcast. So we have done radio shows before. And it includes every single rock off we've ever done. Yes. And um, that is in the link for the description you, of the episode. If you make it onto our show as a guest, you can become a part of that leaderboard too. Uh, but we bit probably don't want ass- you on bit, as a bit guest. Of, bit of something to aspire towards. But Angus, do you know what this week is? We've got a celebration for week 11. Whoa, what are we celebrating, Zach? Everyone who listens to this podcast should be from Africa. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, we told all of you last week to get a VPN if you didn't have one and to change your location to a server in Africa so that we'd have a big spike in African viewers because it's the last content to put on our... uh, Last Last continent. continent. (laughs) Not content. Last continent to put on the map of places of the world that people have listened to our podcast from. So we do hope that pod, you can get a free VPN or you can get at least get a trial of a VPN. So we hope that all of you are listening from Africa. So, ha, wait, so it's this episode that people are supposed to listen this to This episode. So if you're already listening to this and you're like, oh shit, I don't have my VPN on, you can continue listening. But if you do have a VPN... I would argue with that. I would... Uh, if you re- if you No, if you don't know how to, that's fine. But... If you are in any way capable of downloading a VPN and listening to this podcast through a VPN, I think as a listener of this show, it's kind of your duty to do so. Um, and we would be extremely disappointed if you couldn't fulfill such an easy task. It's very, it's not, it's not hard. But by all means, if especially you, if you're listening on your phone, you can just download a free VPN app, and that's it. If you, if it is too hard for you to download a VPN. Please do not stop listening. We have a brilliant <laughs> yeah, yeah, show no. coming. We don't want our, our listeners just to drop because we harass them into pretending using a they're VPN from Africa. That they, they didn't want to use. Um, yeah. Angus, you tell me you have a segment that... I have a segment that it's been on the show pretty much every week, but it hasn't been a segment. It's just been me talking about my my life, essentially. Um, and that's why we're now going to lead into this. 
bought 10 slabs of beer. You bought a giant cardboard cutout of Zach? Your net bank account balance is zero dollars and zero cents. Oh, no, Gus. What did you buy this week? Well, let's find out, Zach, because this is Gus's Bad Financial Decisions. So you've made an opener. That's how often that this is coming in. You've had to make an opener because it's that popular. This is the segment where I just talk about my bad financial decisions, which is pretty much all my financial decisions. Let's be real, Zach. So it started off um, when we bought brand new equipment for this podcast. Yeah. The whole sort of storyline fell around the fact that I lent Angus money to buy a mic sock to protect us from the p- 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 of a mic well, of our voice. And then I cheaped out, got one that was like half the price off eBay and bought a kebab with the rest of the money, which I still think is pretty hilarious. Hilarious, but really not, not a benefit for the show. No, but I will say that just before we started recording, I finally purchased the mic sock. So... That, it's kind of out of place in this segment, so we're not going to talk about that. And there can't be good financial decisions in this, so let's talk about... It's not about... a good financial decision because the podcast is in its 11th week and it's taken <laughs> you 11 weeks to buy something essential better that late, I've had. Better late than never, as they say. Um, oh. But let's get to last night when um, I... So I moved into my new place yesterday and I was moving stuff all day and... Uh, very tired but i decided because i had to come down to record the podcast in aries and there was a party on somewhere much closer to aries than where i live so i was like if i go to that party when i wake up in the morning i'll be closer to aries that was my thought process pretty good thought process now, if you ask me it did help you it did because you woke up at 10 o'clock and you stressed the shit out because you were like oh no i've missed the bus but the bus was like an hour away yeah so you were saved However, did the financial decisions you made in getting to that place closer to Aries justify the fact that you got an extra hour I, of sleep? I certainly didn't catch the train, that's for sure. So, uh... The only other option I can think of would be an Uber. Not an Uber, no. I wouldn't be that financially irresponsible. I called an Ola. <laughs> so <laughs> the exact not. same. Essentially the same thing. Maybe slightly cheaper. But, uh, yeah, that cost me... <laughs> Let's just check my bank statement real quick. Oh, great. Uh, And this is not the first time you have many... Before our first radio show, you were like, no, I don't want to catch the train. Holy shit, I've spent $1,400 this month. (laughs) (laughs) Not Um, all on Ola-related expenses. uh, So, Ola, 3.18am, $148. Now, it's not the first time you've made bad decisions. That is almost... That's $150. That's like... It's a lot. That's it's three or f- that's five mic socks. But to be fair, I knew that if I caught the train, there wouldn't have been any buses to Janjuk. So yeah, I could have just gotten an Uber from like Warn Pond Station or somewhere closer and saved you probably a hundred and twenty dollars. But I also could have just gone all the way, which I did. And um, yeah, and then I was gonna get everyone another Uber so we could what? all go to Macca's together. Macca's the- is like a twi- <laughs> I know where that Macca's is in comparison to where you were staying. That's like a ten minute walk, mate. No, 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 because no, that one was closed. We were gonna go to the one in one Pines. <laughs> so we were gonna go to a Macca's, not in the suburb we were in. We were gonna travel further, but luckily there were there were no Olas around, so I couldn't book one. I'm glad you didn't. Okay, so on the. Side on our whiteboard, we write down what we're saying. I have bad financial decisions. Then I have like two squiggly lines on each side because I thought of two extras and now I'm trying to remember what they were. You're joking. Yeah, (laughs) I shouldn't have just put squiggly lines down. I should have written what they were. Uh, So it was a few days ago. um, I remember buying a bottle of Hennessy. Oh and a God. bottle of Cointro, which are both like $60 bottles of alcohol. Mm. Um, so that's $120 to add on. And then I was drunk and agreed to buy my mate a pouch of tobacco. <laughs> didn't even He didn't even ask me. I pretty much just offered I guess. 
<laughs> so that was another forty dollars. So I'm very clearly seeing where the majority of your one thousand four hundred dollars this week has gone. Yeah, to yeah, that's actually starting to take shape. Oh, at least I know. I think you should get a financial planner. <laughs> I mean, I do budget. It's just the leftover <laughs> money doesn't go to savings where it should. It goes to stupid shit like $150 Ubers and bottles of cognac, which I will admit is not the best, but, you know, it's not the Not worst. the best for someone who's not in the best financial position. Now, we did discuss previously in one of these segments, you were going to buy a piggy bank to put your money in. <laughs> Zach, it didn't work. I genuinely <laughs> thought, I thought this was going to work so well. So we talk, we were talking about... In what was probably the dullest segment this show has ever oh, seen. It was a massive lull, like. We were talking about my, literally just my finances. And I was talking about how I don't use a savings account because I always just take money out of it to buy Uber Eats at 3am. So I wanted to put my money in one of those money boxes that you can't open because I was like, that's way too much effort. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go and get it out. Oh, you would. And you probably did, didn't you? So I was out, out of money one night. <laughs> no, it wasn't like 3 a.m. Uber Eats, but I did want food. And uh, I, I just grabbed a knife from the kitchen and I stabbed it <laughs> open. <laughs> and just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Angus. I just serial killed the money box. And uh, You should probably... F- there's probably bank accounts that you can't touch. Yeah, if the bank could, act, if I could actually get a locked one that when I put money in, I physically cannot get it out. That'd be good. That's what I need. I, I think, think on behalf of because I've got show, no problem saving money. I just unsave it very quickly <laughs> on stupid decisions. Yeah, <laughs> like not even saying any. But but it's a pretty good, pretty good segment, and we wouldn't want this segment to end, would we? <laughs> I I feel like <laughs> on behalf of your future (laughs) i would sacrifice this segment for you to have some amounts of money all right guys well i guarantee you it's at least going to be coming back next week so look forward to that but uh zach you've you've written 3 a.m on the board yeah so my 3 a.m thing is a bit more unrelevant to your 3 a.m thing yeah you didn't you you didn't get a 150 dollar ola no well i just kind of you know I'm asleep at that point. That's like, a weird Saturday night not being in a $150 all or at 3 in the morning. Like the majority of people, you would assume are asleep at 3 a.m. Instagram, you can look at the analytics of your followers. And you yes. can see what time is the best, what time your followers are most active on Instagram. Ah, so, so like you spy on their lives pretty much. Yeah, kind of to see when your post would do the best. So, so when you're on Instagram, it, they're saving information about when you go on Instagram. I guess I should have probably known that. It's, it's pro- pretty obvious, but yeah, I don't, I don't like knowing it. So, I was looking into the analytics for our account because I was like, I'm bored. I want to see what our sh- fans are doing. On, every, on average, Monday nights at 3 a.m. So, this is Monday, Sunday going into Monday. So, when people would have work or school, we have on average every Monday night at 3 a.m., one listener are awake liking posts. Not our posts, just posts in general. Well, you need something to do on your Ola trip. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's not you because you have work on Mondays. Yeah, it's... it's it, Wait, so is this Sunday night, Monday morning? Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, that wouldn't be me. We're making a call out. This is definitely going on our Instagram stories. Are you the 3am listener? Oh, it could be me, actually. <laughs> it, no, it's, pro- it's probably fairly likely that it's me. Okay, I'll stop... I'll, I'll make a conscious effort not to do that. Not to go we'll on Instagram. And see if it goes away. Okay. So we'll do an update. We'll, we'll update you guys in okay. a few weeks on this. Is Angus now 3 a.m. listener? If you're listening and you're like, oh, I am the 3 a.m. follower slash listener on Monday mornings, get in contact. We'd love to know what you're doing at 3 a.m. I'll shout you $150 Uber. No, you will not. <laughs> Ola, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just another shameless plug. <laughs> no, I would... I, I actually... Uh, I recommend um, Didi over all the other ride-sharing apps. We're learning a lot. (laughs) Um, But if you think that it's you, we'd love you to get in contact with us. We've got at Zach and Gus for our Facebook and Instagram. We are Zach and Gus show at gmail.com. That's our email, yeah. So (laughs) I just saw it. I don't want to do it. It, Fish and chips review. So when I saw Angus today, I was like, Angus, how are you going for the show? And he goes, yeah, I'm good. And I'm like, have you planned anything? And he goes, no, I haven't planned anything. Yeah. And I asked Zach on the way and I was like, can we go fish and chips? Yeah, yeah. 
when I get here, do you want to not slur your words? <laughs> this is an audio medium. We can't put freaking subtitles in. <laughs> nah, we can have Braille. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what that's in reference to. <laughs> okay, so... um. Great. <laughs> He's decided to do a review on the fish and chips he had. Yeah, okay. So I had some fish and chips, which because mainly because uh I'm not I'm not hungover. As soon as I got into the into the car, Zach's mom commented that I'm hungover, but I disagree. You're not hungover. You slept at three AM last night. Great. Great, great, great. If you Sorry, just ringing water for non-hangover related reasons. If you can't hear that. I'm turning the volume up <laughs> to amplify the fact that Angus was just gulping down water <laughs> while I was trying to speak to him. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I ate fish and chips pretty much. And that, that is this. Oh, yum. Fish and chips. It's Gus's Fish and Chips Review, you see. Oh, wasn't that a good opener? So you've now promised that you're making two openers and you have a horrible track record of making Well, openers. the reason I just promised an opener for this Fish and Chips Review is because it's such a stretch to call it content that I need to add some garnish. <laughs> <laughs> you've All literally right. just taken a shit on your microphone and you're like getting out the, the car buffer and you're going, oh, I'm going to make this shit shiny. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. who doesn't like a shiny shit? And it's going to be a fucking diarrhea. It's going to be over in about three seconds. You're really putting me off to talk about food right now. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, chips are good. Their minimum chips is uh, a bit too big, in my opinion, even though that's a weird complaint. I don't like being given more food than I can eat. Um, he ate two chips, and then he looks at me and he goes, <laughs> I'm a bit full. Yeah, but if they had... No, it's weird to say this, but... Do you agree that if there's less in a container, you will eat more? Like, yeah. the amount makes it look like... A whole lot more, and it looks like a more daunting task. Yeah. Whereas if you're given it in a small bag... It's scary. You're like, yeah. oh, I can do this, and it's too small for me. Also, I was expecting when they said minimum chips that it was just going to be a little box, so it was it was unexpected, and it, it caught me by surprise. Minimum chips is usually like a dollar for 100 grams, and you paid $4. Yeah. So um, you should have expected a fair few chips. I guess. But also, I, uh, <laughs> I got a burger... With the lot and uh, you're so which is <laughs> so definitely much food. It's definitely not a not not a hangover meal at all. Um, yeah, the burger was pretty good. I only had a few bites. <laughs> I spent thirty bucks at that's this a, fish and chips place. That's a Mike sock amount of food. Yeah, literally, literally, because I I saw that I spent that much and I was like, to Zach, I could have bought a Mike sock. And he's like, Fuck you, and then I actually did. So, so that's. Uh, that's not, I, I still think your mic sock is belongs in the uh, bad financial decisions category. I don't agree. I had to get like I have to get one eventually. Therefore, it's a good financial decision. It's a bad financial decision that it took you that long. That doesn't no. It doesn't get worse with age. Like as long yes, as I. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay, but it's not bad. It's just less good. Okay. <laughs> that. Can we have a rating on the chips, the oh, burger, and overall? Okay. So the chips get. Six burgers out of that's no sit no uh yeah six burgers out of ten I wouldn't, and the I burger I gets seven chips out of ten. <laughs> so on average, you can work that out. The ALP man, <laughs> shout out you're in the ALP as well. That's a reference to the fact that we were both. Oh, I still am in an accelerated program at school, and Angus dropped out. I dropped out three times. Now I've got <laughs> written on written on the planning board something that I've forgotten what it references, so I've got to open my note. Ah, this could be the most exciting thing of the podcast. Zach's just written, I can't be flipped on the board. This is questions I cannot be stuffed Googling. Oh, so wait. So I've got one question and we're going to discuss it. I could have Googled it to find out the answer, but instead I was like, nah, we can discuss it and annoy the... So f- is, are we going to Google it afterwards to find the actual answer? If we want. If we want, or maybe we ask the listeners to do that for us. Yeah, 
Well, because the listeners are going to get extremely frustrated because we're going to talk about a topic that they're probably just going to Google within 10 seconds and go, oh, and we're going to debate it forever. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay. Where do meteors go when they land? What do you mean, where do they go? They go to the ground. Yeah, but like, when the meteor lands, it creates a crater. You never see the meteor still in the crater. Does someone That's... take it home? <laughs> That's a good point. No, I think most of it would just like, pulverize because from the force of the impact because like by the time a meteor enters our atmosphere it's already pretty much burnt up yeah but the thing is it's got something's got to hit the ground to make a crater that's what i thought but then if you look at how big the craters are it's like i know it would have been coming in with a lot of velocity but there has to have been something big there yeah where did it go yeah there's obviously something um I don't know maybe like bounces and like flies back out into space <laughs> <not> <laughs> Oh, that'd be pretty good though. Like, this bouncy ball, like, re- just reflects. And if it didn't have gets... enough momentum, it'd come down and cause another crater. I just thought of this. Okay, so it's like, it, it's a concern that if a meteor, if we find out that a meteor is going to be heading to Earth, how do we stop it? I think I've just come up with a solution. Mm. What if we just put a real big trampoline out and then it will just bounce back? Yeah, but that would really cause a lot of bad tensions with our alien neighbors. Say if we did eventually find alien life somewhere out there and then they're like nah f- you you trampolined that meteor at us thirty thousand years ago well we can't know that but maybe they set, trampolined it at us in the first mm, place that's a very good point i'm sure all advanced civilizations use trampolines to stop meteors <laughs> but that doesn't answer my question where do they go so you've you've suggested they pulverize or sink back into space well i would assume sink the majority the of it would pulverize but i wouldn't it like break up and spread out and like fly through the air and there would just be bits of meteor scattered and they that was what the like there would be just be big rocks everywhere maybe i mean that's probably the sensical sen is that the word sensible sensible uh, did you just say sensical <laughs> <laughs> i did say sensical <laughs> uh, yeah that was that would be the sensical option <laughs> sensical <laughs> sounds like testicle <laughs> We're like 12. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're, we're assuming that it breaks up into little... I agree with you. I reckon it breaks up with into little pieces and scatters everywhere. It's the boring option. I wish it like bounced and went back into space. Or imagine if it just sunk and it slowly sunk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Do we want to Google it or do we just want to forever not know the answer? I reckon it'll be too satisfactory for the listeners if we Google it and find okay, out. Okay, yeah. We, we do not know. We're ending... We're never going to know. You guys can Google it. You can find out, but we will never know. We do not want to know what happens to meteors. And if you tell us... We'll be upset. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Don't email that to show at gmail.com or Insta DM it to at Zach and Gus. Or consider replying, messaging our Facebook page or even our TikTok page at Zach and Gus. Yeah, you wouldn't want to take any of those options to tell us what happens when a meteor hits the earth. We don't want to know. No. Well, that's that. Speaking about TikToks, Angus, you will not believe what happened over the week. <laughs> Did you make TikToks? No, I didn't make TikToks. Something even better happened. The following happened on TikTok. G'day, Zach and Gus. This is Hazy the Human Hedge. Just thought I'd give your podcast a shout out. And for anyone else who likes banter, then this is the podcast for you. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. Who? Okay. So I don't know what I think about this because who is that? I don't know. (laughs) And why is he replying to Imogen's comment? So a friend of ours, Imogen, has decided to ask him to plug our podcast on his TikTok. But who is he? (laughs) Hazy the Human Hedge, I think his name was. Yeah, but so I, I just don't, I don't understand the context of this at all. Neither, but some random has plugged our podcast on TikTok. Well, that's good. It had like three likes. Let's bring in the listeners. That's like three people that could have listened to the podcast. Yeah, I mean, probably not. Did you listen to the podcast? I think, I think on TikTok, you like your own post automatically as well. Oh, so. true. So it's two likes. Imogen probably liked it and I think I liked it. <laughs> all right. Well, that settles that then. <laughs> But on the odd case that you did find our podcast through, I think his name was Hazy the Human Hedge. Yeah. We want to get in contact with you. And also, as you would have found our podcast through TikTok, you should use that opportunity to go and follow us on TikTok. I haven't used that TikTok podcast app 
Yeah, I'm, but still follow us. There might be stuff on there in the future. Yeah, that's very, very, very true. I yeah. reckon we should do TikTok dance trends together. What do you think about that? I, I don't... I think no. I, like, as a shit meme, you know? We have to learn that, and I don't like the idea of learning a TikTok dance. <laughs> that's fair. I don't really want to do that either. Um, yeah, so... A bit stay tuned. We may upload a TikTok to the TikTok account. Okay, so as I didn't have too much content to bring to the show this week, I had to, like... I, I, you know, I relaxed it a bit this week because I, in previous weeks, I, I always bring so much. Like last week that I had to carry the podcast equally as much. <laughs> I, I really don't know. I don't know why Zach just makes up all these lies. Oh. About <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is, yeah, so this is something from a few weeks ago that I just never talked about. This is from the same episode that I grabbed the Tim and Matic thing from. Oh, yeah. So we could have had an episode... So Tim and Maddox happened about a month late, and this is happening a month after that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I just written down that Sia writes a lot of really famous people's songs. Yeah. And it's a real fascinating thing that I th- I think not I think a lot of people know it, but you don't really stop and think about it because okay, so say there's a a really big hit song by a particular artist, right? Would you not expect that that song was written by that person? And it, you would expect it, but what's even weirder to think about is the fact that that person could have had their song written by another really famous artist. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, uh, I didn't really prepare a list, but Sia's written a lot of songs. I know Diamonds, um, Pretty Hurts. I don't know. There's some other ones. Like, there's a lot. But of imagine how really, much like, songs that have hundreds of millions of views that are just written by her. And imagine like being in that position of Sia where you could write a hit song for someone else or take it as your own. Yeah. Like either it's, way it, you're taking It's so money for it. weird though how it's like kind of, it's not kept secret, but it's just not acknowledged 90% of the time. I know. How weird. Yeah. Like. I mean, I would, I would assume Sia's getting paid shitloads of money for that. But... And she'd get even more if it was a hit. But yeah. like, imagine writing... That's like us going to Hamish and Andy and writing scripts for Hamish and Andy's podcast. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, it's literally the artist performing it is just the performer. It's like they're doing a cover of their own song. Um, well, imagine if you were Sia and you did a cover of the song you wrote. <laughs> that would be so fucking weird. That would be like us writing for Hamish and Andy and then us <laughs> parodying Hamish and Andy's segment. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, um... Yeah, the that wacky was... world it is. Yeah, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting that. Last week we unveiled the uh, mailing list, Angus, and a great success it might have been. It might have, but it hasn't. Well, we don't know. Well, we don't know yet. Zach, uh, Zach told me when I got here this morning that no one had signed up, but that was as of seven in the morning. Not when I got here, but when Zach checked. So, so yeah, that was a good hour after we had announced the mailing list. And I don't think many people were listening to the podcast at seven. Do you want seven. to check now? No, nah, let's not. All right. We So we assume someone has signed up in... So we're going to come back to that next no, week? No. No, we're not. We're, we're going to announce the prize winner next week, assuming someone has signed up. If someone hasn't signed up, sign up to the mailing list. You could yeah. win a prize. There sign is... up. Sign up. Sign up. Sign up. And in an incentive to sign up, I am officially announcing the new program to kind of the new advertising program to encourage people to join the mailing list sign up your friend don't tell them that you did it that is a great initiative yep or i i reckon extend that to sign up celebrities that you know sign up anyone we're going to have on the landing page for when you do click the sign up thing it you can enter your email or your friend's email and we won't tell them who signed it up. You don't even have to leave and your name. Just think about it like you're giving them a little gift because they're going to appreciate it. The Zach and Gus podcast, it really is a gift. It is. Like, we're the best thing to happen to your ear holes. We are, and it's really sad that some people don't get to experience that. And it's, it, yeah, you should you should definitely put all your friends' emails. Maybe in, they're not the aware that we do a podcast. Yeah. Maybe they just cannot find the time to do it. But having an email sent to their inbox that well, they maybe there's some check. people who even listen to the show and they're like oh i would really sign love to sign up to the boys mailing list but i just don't have time i wish one of my friends would sign me up sign up for me be a good friend and signed up sign up your friends we don't care if they unsubscribe or block our email 
Well, we kind we, of we do. Kind of but do. But that's not relevant. <laughs> Sign them up because what a funny meme that is. It is, yes. Sign your parents up. Sign your grandparents up if they sign have an email. Sign your dog up if your dog has an email address. Sign for some your reason. maths teacher up. Yeah. Sign up every teacher in your school. Their email addresses are all publicly available. I don't think we should be encouraging people to do that, but definitely go do it. Sign up your work manager because their work email is probably boring. They'd love a bit of an incentive in their email to have a bit of fun. Sign up your hairdresser. <laughs> Sign up the Zach and Garth show at gmail.com. Yes, sign us. Oh, that way. Are we already signed we up? We are already signed up. Oh, you can't sign us up. I wonder what up. happens when you try and sign us up. Find yeah, out. Find that sign out. Us That's going to be something interesting to do. Go to 10 Minute Mail and sign up a random 10 Minute Mail address because that's fun. <laughs> What's 10 Minute Mail? It's like you get an email for 10 minutes and then it kills the email. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It's good for spam. Yeah. Don't do that. Maybe do that. Sign up. Yeah, do what you want, but definitely sign yourself up. That's the main point. We'd love to see you on our mailing list so we can contact you directly and give you the news that you'd love you to know. Podcast announcements go up there. You'll be the first to know about radio shows. And really, that's all the the news you need to know. What do you need? Why why would you want to know anything about, about anything else when you can know what we're doing with our pod who cares about global warming the world's getting warmer get over it you know that yeah you will be sitting in that warmth while you listen to our podcast if you don't want it to be warm turn the aircon on <laughs> which definitely won't contribute to the global warming but if you've got your aircon on you're not even going to notice it that's true it's an and all-round that's why we situation have zach and glass solve climate change but do you know how we did that we we could just put a massive air conditioner on earth that just can and then we won't ever have to worry about global warming. Sign your air conditioning company up to the Zach and Gus yes! mailing list. Yes. <laughs> this has gone so fucking wild. <laughs> in a bit more uh, of a karma, karma, karma. Not karma as in I punch you and I'll get punched eventually. Karma as in karma. Raj called us last week and this is the Raj call. <laughs> hey, Raj. Hey, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Hi. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry, I haven't talked to you in a while. I, I just pulling up your stuff now. Um, yeah, okay, so basically, how long has it been since we last talked? Um, I think maybe a week and a half since we last talked. Um, you gave me your email, but when I talked to you on email, your email didn't go through. Okay, hold on. Is your is your email? Uh, Zach Briefer and then at gmail dot that's it yours. No, my email my email is Zach and Gus Show at gmail dot com. Okay. Um. Okay. All right. Um. We were still kind of interested in kind of that um California kind of thing. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Sorry. Um. I'm just gonna put you on hold just for a minute or two if that's okay. I'm just gonna put you through to. Uh, my my friend Panji, if that's okay. Sure, Raj. I'll be a minute. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I, we actually couldn't get him uh, right now. Okay, I'm just pulling up your file, really. Uh, sorry, hold on. Um, yeah, so you passed all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, now here's the thing. Yeah. Wait, hold on, sorry. Hold on one second. Okay, sorry about that. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, basically, we were looking at flying out to Californians. Is that correct? I think so. You're the one that was giving me the offer, Raj. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I sorry. I just kind of, I get a little bit uh, mixed up with all this kind of stuff. So, um, all right. Um, okay. So basically, how it's gonna work? Yeah. Uh, well, we our company is very much linked with. Uh, do you know Qantas? Yeah, I do know Qantas. Okay, our company is, is kind of linked with that, and we also have a bit with that, uh, but. For the duration of our partnership, yeah, uh, yeah. So we're gonna be we're actually when this whole coronavirus kind of stuff is done, we're gonna be flying out from uh, is it Melbourne, Australia? Yeah, is that right? We're gonna be flying out from Melbourne, Australia, out to uh, California is where our HQ is. Um, only one thing about that. Yeah, there is a small payment fee. Uh, the flight that we book for you, 
it's going to be covered uh, money wise and all of that there's yeah. going to be a bit of a small payment fee just to make sure uh, this is you uh, who you say you are and all that kind of stuff of 599 so basically the small fee is going to let me just write that down real quick okay so yeah that's going to be 599 yeah, uh, per ticket so uh, you are looking at bringing uh, the other partner you with on the call Yeah, do you remember my other partner's name? Uh, I I believe it was Gus, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. So basically, okay, just to do this, um we're just going to need to go of your credit card credentials. I'm going to pass you on to my assistant uh, James right now. So, I'm uh, sorry, Panjit wasn't here, but I'm going to pass you on to James, is that okay? Sure. Yeah, I'm just going to start. Okay, hold on. Uh, all right. Is this your friend James? What? Your friend James. Don't you have a friend called James? I do have a friend called James. Is he pranking us? No. My friend James is an idiot. <laughs> I know that. James Miro not speaking on my RT today. Hello, it's Zack. The greeter at the uh, Okay, two tickets to California? Sure. Great. So what I'm going to need from you is I'm going to kind of need your credit card c- c- credentials. Could I uh, just so instead I don't have a bank account. Could I just bring $6 to California? You know what? Look. We under our terms and conditions we look we kind of can't do that but if you look if you go to the Walmart yeah <laughs> <laughs> We've got you, Raj. Who are you? Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good. Oh, it's Dane. Hi, Dane. You're on the Zack and Gus podcast. Thank you. I'm not Dane, by the way. It's not Dane. Who is it? You actually don't know me, and I don't. I don't know you in person. But we have a friend in common. Who's our friend in common? I, I don't know if he wants me to tell you or not. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Can I message him? Sure. Uh, I I might call you back in a minute is that right? Sweet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're recording this right now. We've just received a call from Raj and this is the second call and I thought, you know what? Get him on record for this one. That's the end of the Raj storyline. Props to whoever's uh just done that to us. We're going to get a call back for from you identifying you, hopefully. My bet is It's Zack and Gus from Gu- or Gus and Zack. That's my bet. I thought it was Dane. It sounded a lot like Dane. Hey. Hi, Raj. Hi. Sorry. Uh, they really don't. I, I, I didn't really think it'd be much of a thing, but they don't really want me to tell you. Sorry. Do they know? Sorry. Do they know Angus more or me more? I, I actually don't know. I don't know any of you. Sorry. But yeah, I just got requests to do uh, to mess with you guys. A while ago. Okay. So, I just <laughs> I think we've got one major question. Was that you with the Indian accent or do you have an Indian friend? I know that's me. <laughs> Holy shit, that's in that's impressive. <laughs> You've got a really good Indian accent. Thank you. I'm actually I've got a, a friend who I well basically <laughs> <laughs> he messed it up for me because I I put him over here like, "Yeah, I'm going to put you under my supervisor." And then he kind of like put it on cuz He he uh he laughed and uh yeah that was that was definitely the point. Can we get a name yeah. from you or are we or do we have to call you Raj? Uh call me call me Raj. Okay. So uh, yeah, I try to make it seem like an actual scam. I uh, I didn't try to make it seem like we're actually trying to fly you out. I just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Angus thought it was a scam too. Um oh, okay. You thought it was a scam, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, no. I thought it was like classic Indian phone scam, but Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I guess the one thing that really made it obvious to me or both of us was well, that, that it wasn't real was there's no way you can get my number unless you already knew me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Zachary, we just found out that person that gave us your phone number actually like we don't actually know them. They're a mutual friend. We got it. So basically what happened was we went to our friend's house and there was another person there and then they gave us your phone number. Oh. We were asking our friend about it and he's like he was really confused he's like what I don't even know the person so yeah 
So you don't know how you got my number? We don't. Or well, there was a few. Here's the thing, because when I go um, to these places, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, this is serious. Like, I'm not lying. When we go there, I, I kind of, uh, they, they all want me to do prank calls and that. So I just get prank calls from their friends, uh, like their friends and that. And like, I just, yeah. Basically, the person that we thought gave you, gave us your number, isn't the person that gave us your number. So we're not actually sure who gave us your number. Okay. If that makes sense. Wait, so the person you thought that gave you my number got it from someone else? No, no. The person we thought gave us your number, like, just didn't give us your number at all. Oh, okay. He, but, like, yeah. He was there, though, when we got your number. Okay. That's why we thought it was him. You, you have yourself a very nice... See you, Raj. <laughs> wow, what a call. What a call. That was, I think, about eight minutes worth of edited Raj content. Yeah. Um, As you'll notice, I was the only one speaking in that call. That Yeah, well, I mean, Raj, Raj contacted you. And that I was just fair. kind of standing there awkwardly in the corner. But you were laughing and filming me for yes. no good reason. Yes, I, uh, I'm, should I put those videos up? I, the thing is, I recorded you on Snapchat. And oh, so right. I had to like exit out every time it got to 60 seconds and start re I noticed you doing that and I was like, you have a camera app. Yeah, I know. I just never, I'm so used to recording everything on Snapchat that I just never opened the camera app. So maybe the videos will be up from me calling portions if of the If so, Raj there'll call. be terrible skips and it'll just be generally bad, but you know. You might see them somewhere on our internet pages, which are the Facebook page, Zach and Gus. But yeah. Uh, you don't want to list the rest of them? <laughs> <laughs> at Zach and Gus on Instagram. At Zach and Gus on TikTok and our email, which we're not going to put away. <laughs> um, so is this the end of the Raj saga? I don't know. Raj, are you out there? I, we never got to... Did you I, Did you notice Raj's name? Like, not name, voice. When you were listening, did you go, I know Raj? Because someone... Wait, you mean Raj's voice after he stopped yeah. pretending to be Raj? Because... Or did you recognize the Indian accent? Do you have a friend that's really good at Indian accents? Did you tell someone... I don't know. Are you asking me right now or the listeners? The listeners. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> because, because I have no idea who it is. As you would have heard, Raj refused to tell us he ended up realizing he didn't know us. Yeah. Which I think is fake. I reckon it's not. It's so it doesn't make any sense. It's a it's a mismatched storyline. So again, this is a call out to Raj. We still do not have your number. I mean, the guy made it sound like he's got like twenty people getting him to do a prank call every week. Like Yeah. Um, but it, you knew too much about us. Yeah. And you called us so close after the podcast went live. I reckon you know us. Mm. Mm. Please. We don't I mean, have any you've hate brought, towards you. You've, you've brought so much good content to this show. We want to be able to recognize you. It's, it's clearly, the prank is over now, so there's no reason not to reveal yourself. Also, if you befriend us, think about the fun we could have with you. We could get you. We could get you on the show. We could have a Raj guest episode. Don't pretend that you don't want to make that happen. And it's in your, the ball's in your court. Even if you don't want to do that, we would love to have you do a monthly segment or something where Raj calls people. Yeah, yeah, there's so many possibilities, so many cool possibilities here. We don't want to make hate, lo Raj, we want to make love. <laughs> oh, Zach wants to make love with Raj! <laughs> Raj, please, call me, baby. <laughs> That's the end of the Zach and Guys show, you can contact us on Facebook or Instagram. We also oh, have a TikTok. The, the email. Why are we saying this? It says it in the end part. Bye. <laughs> Wowza. That's the end of the podcast. Um, we do still need you guys to vote. So if you haven't already voted. Go vote now. The equipment we'll get will make the quality of this podcast 20 billion times better. It won't, however, improve the quality of the content we bring to this show, which will still be at the moderate level we always promise. That's right. Click the link in the description. You know you can do it. It's really going to take five seconds and it will help us massively. I totally agree. So please, go vote now. Go vote now. 
That brings us to the end of another Zach and Gus episode. You can like us on Facebook, Zach and Gus. You can follow us on Instagram, at Zach and Gus. And you can contact this show anytime by emailing Show at gmail.com. Make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you next week.